3D Design for 3D Printing tutorial number one. Today we make a simple tool holder using constrained sketches and extrusions. This video is part of a series on using 3D Design for 3D Printing using a free Onshape account. I'll link the playlist and the first episode below so you know how to make an account and set up your units. The focus today is to design a simple tool holder and to do that we'll learn how to create a 2D sketch, constrain it and then extrude it to give it thickness. When I got this set of Allen keys they didn't come with any type of case. So I designed and 3D printed one, a simple design that we're going to base today's tutorial on. This design will adapt to more than just Allen keys. Anything that has a thin handle and a thicker head will be suitable. Screwdrivers fit this description as well, so I'll be designing a holder for them in this video. Before we hit up CAD, we need to take some measurements. And a ruler is the bare minimum, but I'd highly recommend investing in a cheap set of digital calipers. I've got links for some in the description below. Lay out all of your tools and measure the thickness of the narrowest part. I'd recommend arranging the tools in the order that you plan to store them and writing down the measurements in the same order on a piece of paper. It's also worth measuring the thickest part of the diameter as this will help with spacing. Finally, wherever you plan to mount the tool, take a ruler, get the bench thickness if you need to, but also put that ruler in place and work out roughly where the tools will sit so you can get an idea of how wide your tool holder will be. Because we're 3D printing, we have some design considerations. You need to be aware of your 3D printer's volume as that will dictate the maximum size of the part you can design. And while we're designing, we need to think about leaving a flat surface to touch the bed, which way we're going to orient the print for maximum strength, and in this orientation, trying to avoid support by considering our overhangs. So after we've logged into Onshape, we're going to come up to the upper left and click on Create and then Document. You can have multiple models inside the same document, so I'm simply going to call mine a general name like tool holders. We can now click create. The first thing I recommend you do is get familiar with the camera controls. You can use the scrolling function on your mouse or touchpad to zoom in and out, hold down the right button to orbit the camera, and hold down the scroll wheel to pan, or alternatively hold down control and use the right clicker to pan. You'll also notice a view cube in the upper right corner and we can click on any surface to face it as well as using these buttons to rotate the camera. A handy shortcut if you've zoomed in too far and can't find your model is F for fit. Along the top are all of our tools that we will discover over time and on the left hand side is our feature tree. There's nothing there at the moment so let's start our first sketch by coming up and clicking sketch. A sketch in Onshape is just like a sketch in real life. It's flat and two dimensional. And the first thing Onshape needs to know is exactly where we want to position this 2D sketch. If we had a model partially built, we could place a sketch on any of the flat surfaces, but since we don't, we'll use one of the provided planes and we're gonna click on the top plane to begin sketching. A common mistake people make is hitting the tick because they think they're confirming a sketch, but this is really telling Onshape that you're finished with the sketch. So don't hit the tick until later on. If you do hit it by accident, we can edit any feature in the feature tree by simply double clicking it. Time to start drawing and I'm going to press the N key to spin the camera to face the sketch directly and I'm going to press the P key to hide the planes. Doing so will toggle them on and off. I'm going to come up to my sketch toolbar and select the default corner rectangle. I'm then going to snap to the origin and draw the outline of my tool holder. At this stage I'm not worried about dimensions. Let's draw some cutouts with the circle tool. The shortcut is C. In my case, I know I need six circles, so I'm gonna draw those roughly in place as well. First click for the center, a second click for the perimeter. So it's time to introduce a very important concept and that is constraining sketches. And we'll notice that some of our lines are black, whereas others are blue. The blue lines are unconstrained, which means we can click and drag them. And the aim is to get them all black to make the sketch fully constrained. Fully constrained means there's only one way the geometry can be interpreted. To help with this, we're going to use a construction line. So I'll come up to the line tool and then we'll notice this icon here that says construction with the keyboard shortcut Q. We can press the Q key to toggle any line between construction and normal. Let's come down and snap to the midpoint indicated by the square under the cursor and the floating midpoint icon. 
and then we'll move the cursor across and snap the other side of the line on the right hand boundary. To exit any tool, we can then press escape. What we can now do is constrain the center point of all of these circles to be on this construction line, meaning they'll all be aligned. Across the right hand side are all of our constraint tools, and we're going to use the first one, Coincident, that has the keyboard shortcut I. As you're about to see, this makes two sketch items joined to the same point. So I'll now click the center point of the circle, and then the construction line, and we can see that it will move to snap. We'll then repeat this for the other circles, which makes our sketch a lot neater. Time to get our design the right scale. And to do that, we're going to use the dimension tool. It's in the middle of the toolbar and the keyboard shortcut is D. Let's firstly dimension the thickness of our holder by clicking on the vertical line, moving the mouse out to the side and clicking a second time. I know I'm aiming for roughly 40 millimeters, so that's what I'm going to type in. We can see that the whole sketch has scaled to match this new dimension of 40 millimeters. Now I'm going to add the dimensions for each of the cutouts for my screwdriver holder. The dimension tool is still active because it's highlighted blue. So I can simply click on the outside of the circle and then a second click off to the side to dimension the diameter. My largest screwdriver was 6.2 millimeters. I don't want the fit to be too tight. So I'm going to make the cutout for it 7.5 millimeters, just over a millimeter of extra clearance. And of course, we now repeat the dimensioning for the other cutout circles, adding the same amount of clearance for each one. At this point, I realize I actually had seven screwdrivers, so I'll press C for the circle tool and come back and draw the extra one. So we have our general shape, but how far apart should these be? Hopefully like me, you also measured the diameter of the handles. So now I'm gonna represent that by drawing another circle. I want this one to be a construction line as it's just a guide. So I'm gonna press Q to toggle the line and I can click to complete the circle. After we dimension it, we can see that things are a bit tight. Remember that everything blue is unconstrained and we can click and drag them into a better position. Let's now press D to add some dimensions and finalize the sketch. I'll click on the center of the circle and then on the vertical line that lets me dimension between the two and I'll make this a nice round number in 15. I'm happy with the spacing for the first one. So now I can repeat this process for the other tools. Draw a construction line around the outside and dimension it to represent the widest part and then set a dimension to set the spacing between each tool. Fast forward and we're almost done. We can see that almost everything is black. Now's a good time to double check your measurements and I realized I've made a mistake. So now we can point out that by double clicking on any dimension, we can edit it. This gap feels a little tight on the side here, so I'm gonna expand that and add my final dimension on the right hand side to fully constrain the sketch as indicated by every single line being black instead of blue. So now I can hit tick to finish the sketch. So we can see that our geometry is completely two dimensional. So let's take the next step and make it three dimensional. To do this, we're gonna come up to the button next to sketch, which is extrude and the keyboard shortcut is shift E. This blue box here is prompting us to click on the regions that we want to extrude. And it should be a simple matter of a single click. And that has selected the internal part of our sketch. And it's giving us a preview as to how it will look with the default thickness of 25 millimeters. If we want to do it by eye, we can drag the arrow. However, most of the time you'll want to type in an exact measurement. So that's what I'm going to do. When we're happy, we click the tick again. Now that we have our first solid body, we have our first part appear on the parts list. I'm gonna right click on this and rename it. And in my case, call it screwdriver holder. Now our design's looking a little bit blocky. So let's add some fillets or curves to these two external edges. The first option is to edit the sketch and use the inbuilt sketch fillet tool. We then click on the corners we wanna fillet and add a dimension. Everything will update and include our new fillets. I'm gonna undo that from the upper left and show you the second way, which is adding a fillet to a solid rather than a sketch. This works much the same way. We simply click the two edges and then input our radius. Hit the tick to confirm and we end up with the same result. If you're unsure of your measurements and spacing at this point, here's how you can print a quick prototype to test the fit. So what we're going to do is edit our extrude and make the thickness very thin, 0.6 millimeters, which is only three layers thick for a typical 0.2 millimeter layer height. Time to download a file ready to 3D print. We're now going to right click, come to export and make sure our format is on SDL or whatever other format you print with. 
the fine preset for resolution will give the best quality and you should double check your units as well. Click OK and we'll see the SDL will download almost instantly. A test print like this is very fast and uses very little filament. And in my case, I was able to confirm that I was happy with the spacing. However, one of the flathead screwdrivers was a little bit wide and this hole needed to be expanded. We are getting close, so let's add a mounting boss. So we can hold our tools, but we have no way to mount the holder. We're gonna build onto our design and let's look at a couple of ways to do that. We're gonna start a new sketch. And the first way is to add onto the shape by replicating my Allen key holder. So this time, instead of a plane, I'm gonna to click to draw on the bottom face, press N to get the camera facing the right way. And then we're gonna learn an important tool called the use tool with the keyboard shortcut U. With this tool, we can click on any existing geometry and it will be traced to the current sketch. So I'm gonna click on this line and we can see it's inserted in, which lets us draw additional lines by snapping to it. Fast forward to me roughly drawing the outline of the boss as well as the mounting holes. So I know I want this piece to extend 30 millimeters and I know I want two four millimeter holes, but the rest is unconstrained. The first thing I'll add is an equal constraint and this will set the two holes to be the same diameter. I'll also set an equal constraint for my two guidelines and that will match the spacing from side to side. Finally, I'll do a horizontal constraint and when applied to the guidelines, it will make them horizontal. The only thing I need to add is a dimension to set the width of these two circles. We'll finish the sketch and then click extrude followed by clicking in the middle of our new sketch. We can see here the preview is not exactly what I want. We'll toggle the opposite direction by hitting the arrow icon and I'll set my desired depth. You'll notice that we can have a new and separate shape, but in our case, we wanna make sure that we're on add and that's gonna add the two parts together. For me, this is exactly what I want, but let's look at some variations. Some people might prefer to start a sketch on the side of our object and then add on some triangular brackets. We can then extrude that into the middle of the shape, once again, reversing the direction and setting our width and also ensuring we're on add. We can then add a third and final sketch to the front of the object and we can trace our new geometry by using the use tool. We can snap a construction line to the midpoints before adding a clearance hole as well as a hole for the screw to go through. Add our dimensions and everything will be fully constrained. To finish this type of mounting boss, we're going to have two extrusions. Firstly, the center hole, which we'll change to remove will then change from blind, which means a distance to through all and confirm by clicking the tick. That's cut our hole the whole way through. Now for the second extrusion, we want to use that same sketch. So we'll show it by clicking the eyeball. And then for our second extrusion, we'll select the space between the two circles. We're still going to remove material with this extrusion, but we're gonna make sure we don't go the whole way through. That's just another mounting option. And you can repeat this for the other side to complete your part. To get back the design I want, I'm gonna keep on pressing undo because Onshape has an infinite amount of undos right back to when you started your document if that's what you need. Let's export the model and revisit our considerations. The holder fits within the bed. We have a large flat surface underneath. We don't have any overhangs and our layer line orientation isn't important for this model, but it will be in future tutorials. And like magic, our design will appear before our eyes. And because we made that very quick prototype version, we know that the fit for everything is spot on. So the only thing left to do is to find a mounting position and use two screws through my mounting boss to hold it in place. This is a simple part that has a simple job, but because we printed it ourselves, this little project is immensely satisfying. And remember something off the shelf wouldn't be available for these mismatched set of screwdrivers. And that's our first tutorial out of the way. I tried to present in a way that would accommodate different designs using the sketch and extrusion tools in Onshape. In the next installment, we'll design and print something else, expanding our tool set and workflow in Onshape. So get your suggestions into the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy designing and 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.